right, guys, so we're out here at the beautiful uh, Square Lake in Minnesota. I'm actually not sure what city we're in right now. Um, but as you can see, it's like I'm the only person in the parking lot. I mean, it is, it is nobody here. So I figured now is as good a time as any before we put the Corvette away for the winter time. Um, we do have the Z06 is basically done, but the uh, C4 we're gonna ride it basically until the snow starts sticking. Um, but I figured today would be as good a day as any to talk to you guys about everything that is wrong with my C4 Corvette. Um, as you guys may or may not know, uh, go back and watch uh, my videos about at, like when I first started, which is a little over a year ago. I think it was last July I started. Got a highway back there, so I got some cars going by. Um, where I talked about how I got the car, the story behind the car, and you would know that it is a salvage title car, and as a result, there have been some issues with it um, based on its history. But it's been a salvage title literally its entire life. The guy who bought it, it's a one owner car, um, rolled it literally a month after he bought it. So it's been a salvage title for its entire life. It is a 96, it's the last year of the C4. Uh, and it does have the LT4 motor with the six-speed transmission, so it is, in some respects, a grand sport without really being a grand sport, which is great because it saved me about 20 grand by being that. So, without further ado, let's get into it. First thing about this car that you'll notice is the paint. It is pretty bad. I mean, look at this. That's pretty bad. Um, the car is dirty, so that doesn't help, but there's plenty of spaces here where you can see where it's not the greatest. Um, lots of scratches. Um, so yeah, it's it's not the greatest. More scratches there. You can see here, it looks like that's, this might even be a different hood because there's different spots here where you can see there's red. The hood was originally red and then they changed it. So we've got that. Uh, look at this. All this stuff on the hood. Just looks, it just looks bad. It's bad. So we got that going for us. Um, as we come around, since I have the door open, if you look at the door, you can see right here where the door is cracked. So this door panel at some point will be needing to be replaced. Um, another thing that I can point out while we're here, why don't we get this going? We have weather stripping that needs to be replaced. So if you look here, all along this, uh, the inside of the door here, um, the door jam. If you look here, like all along the back, um, this actually is in halfway decent shape, um, but it's not really, it's pretty loose. Uh, but this is ripped and this is common. You see this a lot, most C4s, I mean, if I was to make a C4 buyer's guide, this would probably be at the top of the list. So weather stripping, you're probably going to be replacing it unless you find one that's in really good shape. If you look at this, this is pretty bad too. I mean, this is even missing. So a project that I have kind of neglected over the summer, but we will definitely be doing uh, before the spring hits uh, because uh, when it rains, that could be a concern because water will pool up in this spot here. So. Um, and then as you can see on this side, same thing, we've got the door jam cracking here. Uh, if you have not seen my video about my roof, this is not the original roof. Um, the original roof flew off the car because I was that guy who did not bolt it down all the way. It flew off a block from my house. I was going about 40 miles an hour. Bottom line is it actually landed right side up and it was probably salvageable, but then a car, three cars went went around it, the last car went right over it and, and, and broke the frame. So I ended up having to get a new get a new roof. Now, this is, I actually have a different weather strip for this, but I'm not a huge fan of this one. It's kinda, it's kinda cheap. So I'll be replacing this because I've already got this piece. Um, and then also there's front weather stripping that is missing. And the reason why it's missing on the roof is because uh, I was going to wrap it, which I'm still going to do. Uh, do like a carbon fiber style wrap. I just really like that. I've seen actually one of, when I went to Cars and Coffee a few months back, somebody had one with the uh, carbon fiber wrap and I saw it and I thought it looked awesome. So I'm gonna do the same. Uh, but as you can see here, the part that is not attached to the hood, that's a little iffy. So we do have that going for us. 
All right, guys. So let's pop the hood here. So we've got the hood popped. If we look here, the motor actually looks fairly clean. Um, I did do a video, or yes, I did do a video on these LED headlights that I have in here. Um, unfortunately, I have not posted that yet, but I will. Um, but here we go really quickly before I get to those headlights. First, for the computer, as you can see, that wiring harness is kind of in a little rough shape. I mean, it's, I don't even know how I would get this off, to be honest with you. So, I don't know. I, I'm going to figure out a way to deal with that, hopefully sometime this winter. But, it's, uh, so far, so good. It's not, we don't have any issues. Um, the other issue that I had, um, which I've already made a video on as well, is this car tended to overheat the car does not overheat any well because anymore because of the fact that i put that aftermarket dewitt's two row radiator in there which you can't see but it's i mean it's i mean you can see here's the here's the metal here's the direct fit it's a direct fit all aluminum radiator uh it's amazing uh, literally the car doesn't even come close to overheating ever even if i'm sitting in traffic like it'll do what it normally what it should do which is go to 228 if you're sitting on a dead stop or in a parking lot you'll be at 228 degrees the high speed fan will kick on so on so on so and then it'll drop back down to where it should be um but back to these headlights so the headlights look great they work great uh i wish they threw light a little further down the road but in terms of brightness themselves uh they're very bright much better than the than the original headlights which are starting to get worn and corroded so but here's the problem so let me put the key back in here actually i don't even know if i need to do that so so as you see here we've got the lights right so now we flip them right so i don't know if you guys can hear that noise over the all the geese over by the lake but let's try it again so they're on right now let's turn them off So you can see that I am the victim of the worn out or rapidly wearing out uh, gears in the uh, for the headlight motor. So I will have to do that. I'll have to go to those bronze gears uh, this winter, which is totally fine. Um, I kind of expected that I was going to have to do that, and it's a it's a it's a very very worthwhile mod. So I recommend that everyone do that. Now let's look at the interior real quick before we finish up on the outside. So if we look here, you can see that it's pretty dirty in here. Uh, I mean, that's cosmetic. It's not that big of a deal. Um, but this shifter here, if you look at the shifter, like this whole shifter piece is coming loose. So you can't actually, like it doesn't even bolt down anymore to the console here. So I'm going to have to fix that. Also, if we look here at the buttons on the console for the seats if you notice now one thing about these seats when you have the power seats the pump that inflates the uh the diaphragms for each seat is actually on the passenger side so no matter if you have it on driver's side or passenger side the diaphragm is always going to make noise on this side because that's where it is so just so you guys know uh, the, the motor, I should say, for the diaphragms for each seat is on the is on the passenger side. That being said, the diaphragms are not inflating for the driver's side, so they're adjustable for the passenger side, but they're not adjusting for the driver's side. And that's been that way since I bought the car. So I'll I'll probably look into um, try to figure out how to get that fixed. I've seen a few videos out there. There's not too many on that, but that's kind of one thing that I've been looking at doing. Uh, the other thing. Um, we've got the factory radio here, which I actually like it. I thought about getting an aftermarket radio. I might still do it. We'll see. But really all I care about is Bluetooth. I don't really care about anything else in this car. Most of the time I'm listening to the motor. I don't really care about the actual, uh, um, uh, sound system and the sound system, considering it was made in 96, is actually a halfway decent sound system. Um, let's see. So if we turn on the car real quick, guys. So if you notice, let me start the car so that these other lights will go away. So when you start the car, all the lights go away, except for 
the airbag light is not an issue. It goes away too. Okay, so if you look here, we've got the service LT, LTPWS. That is the low tire pressure warning system. Hey guys, so while I was, I, I realized while I was making the video that I forgot to make an explanation or finish my explanation of the LTPWS light on my dash, which is the low tire pressure warning system. So effectively, uh, for the C4, uh, this was like cutting edge technology at the time. And basically what e each sensor, much like modern sensors, uh, there was a sensor in each wheel. The difference is uh, the sensors in the C4 are piezoelectric, which means that they don't use batteries. The rotational uh, force of the wheel actually is what creates, uh, creates the power and creates the connection uh, to the car, to the computer in the car. Um, GM doesn't make these parts anymore, so they're very expensive. They're like $350 a corner uh, if you can find them. Um, and I just didn't think it was worth the effort to basically try to swap out my, uh, the sensors out of my old saw blade wheels into my Grand Tour replica wheels, so I, I left them off. The other thing, too, is you could pull the fuse, and that would take care of the light. The issue with that, though, is that that same fuse also controls cruise control. And I drive my car a ton. I drive it every day as much as I can. Uh, and as a result, uh, I use the cruise control a decent amount. So for me, that would be a big issue. So I've just chosen to live with it. Um, there's probably a way you could go to the dealer and get the light turned off or, or pull the light um, from the driver information center yourself. Um, and I've seen some things online on how to do that. I just don't think it's worth the effort, so I've kind of just left it. But just wanted to throw that out there for uh, people who may have this issue or people who are thinking of or weighing the pros and cons of going to aftermarket wheels and dealing with that issue if you have a C4 that is equipped with the low tire pressure warning system. What I want to talk about right now is the driving dynamics. What is wrong with my C4 Corvette? Now, this might be a little bit more general, um, but I want to go through my experiences. So, the shocks on this car Probably when they were new, they were fantastic. Um, this car, I don't believe, has the Z51 package. When I look at the RPO codes, I did not see that. Um, but it looks—it just feels like the shocks are worn. And and when you look, when you pop the hood, and you know, one of the things that I like about all Corvettes is you got that clamshell hood that, and the seat in the C4 looks like an Indy car where you got the exposed uh, suspension. You can see the whole uh, that whole assembly uh, by the wheels, but. Um, those shocks, I'm pretty sure those Bill Steins are pretty, pretty worn. They need to be replaced. So, here to give you an example. So I'm driving. I'm doing about 60 right now. Um, and if I do, if I just kind of do one of these, you can feel like the whole car is, is floating like a Cadillac, you know. And uh, that's not why we buy these cars, right? We don't buy them because they float like Cadillacs. Do we care about ride quality? Of course we do. Um, but we need a little bit sharper handling than that. So I have some things that I'm looking at doing. Uh, obviously there's shot, you can replace the shots, which I'm going to do. Uh, I've seen some people that have gone to coilovers, which I'm not sure how I feel about coilovers. Um, I don't know if I'm that, I think I'll wait until I get more experience at the track uh, before I decide to go that route, but probably I'll go with Doug Rippey. has got these valve shocks. Um, that deliver a little better ride quality and they give you uh, that sharper handling that you're looking for. For me also, from a maintenance perspective, I'd probably be looking at tie rods and things like that as well because this car, just the steering is a little bit loose on center. I can do a lot of, there's a lot of play in the steering wheel before you really start getting into the turning radius of the car. So that's something that I'm, I, I need to look at as well. Um, as far as the braking, and I did not get a chance yet to put in that brake bias spring, but this car combined with the, the kind of the soft suspension, um, when, you, when you're on the brakes hard, so imagine you're on a, on a track and you're coming into a turn, um, you wanna be smooth with your steering, smooth with your braking, uh, but in the event that you need to do kind of an emergency stop or anything like that, what I've noticed is that this car really uh, does not brake linearly um, and I think that's because of the suspension and also because of the uh, the fact that the brakes are, are right now my brakes are, are, are kind of worn so they, they, they need to be replaced and I'm debating whether or not I'm going to go to the C5 uh, front brakes but definitely you combine those two things like like right now like the car 
will stop fine. So it dropped a lot of speed pretty quick there. But the problem is it uh, it just wasn't really, it's not, the braking isn't real even. I forgot to uh, make an outro. So, hope you guys enjoyed this video. Please uh, leave a comment in the comment section. Uh, please like, please share. If you're not a part of the channel, uh, if you're not subscribed, please go ahead and hit that subscribe button and hit the little bell so you get notified every single time uh, that I do post and upload. Um, and let me know what you guys think. Uh, what did you guys experience? Those of you who have C4s or really any Corvette for that matter, what's been your experience in terms of your ownership? I've had this Corvette now for a little over a year and three months now, and I haven't really done a one-year ownership review, so I'll probably do that too. But uh, let me know what you guys think, and we'll see you in the next one. Take care. Peace out. Be